week five of computational algebraic topology is all about cohomology, which is a dual theory to homology. Uh, and let's start with seeing what the source of this duality is. So the setup is that V is a vector space over a field F. And the, the dual notion is that of the dual vector space, which looks like some, uh, something like this. The dual space, uh, and we'll call it V star of V, is the vector space of all linear maps that start from our vector space V and end up in the coefficient uh, field F. Um, there are, uh, there's a part of this definition that needs to be checked, which is that uh, the set of all such maps actually carries the structure of a vector space. Um, and really, if you want to see that, the, the important thing is uh, if you have scalars uh, in F and two such maps, P, Q, V to F, uh, can you define, um, or, or whether is alpha times P plus beta times Q uh, another linear map? And the answer is yes, yes it is. Therefore, you have on your hands a vector space, you have to check other axioms, but this is sort of the basic one. Okay, now, um, given uh, the, the dual vector space, you can make things um, about it fairly precise. Now, as, as it stands, it might look slightly more complicated than V itself. I mean, if you have a hold on the elements of V, what can you say about the elements of V star? So um, if the dimension of V is finite, then we have some nice basis, maybe. Um, B0, Bn. So if dimension of V is N, so there is some basis. Um, this induces a dual basis of B star, uh, which again, we will write as B zero star, Bn star. Now, each bi star is going to be a map from v to f. And uh, in order to define a map from v to f, now that I have a nice basis in my uh, at hand, all we need to do is, uh, uh, is, is decide where it sends the basis elements. And of course, this element bi star is a dual of the basis element bi. So um, bi star acts on bj, some, other, some basis element of v, uh, as 1 in the field f, so just the multiplicative identity, if i equals j, and 0 otherwise. Okay, so this is a fairly simple uh, way of getting a hold on the elements of v star if you think you understand the elements of v. Now, the interesting thing here so far, uh, I mean, so you, you, you've... Um, you can conclude here that, uh, uh, I guess in this case, what is the dimension of V? 0 through n plus 1. So uh, that, that's 0 through n, so that's n plus 1. So you get dimension of V is dimension of V star when dimension of V is finite. Uh, I'm making no claims about uh, infinite dimensional vector spaces and their duals here. That's a hairier uh, topic. Okay, so uh, let's go on and see what happens to linear maps uh, in the face of duality. So given a linear map A from uh, V to W, its dual map is the linear map, which I'll call A star. And here's the important bit. Really, this is the source of all the duality. It's that this map goes from W star to V star rather than in the direction you might expect, which is V star to W star, is given by um, basically composition. So you start with 
something in W star, which must be a map from W to the field F. So let's say this is Q. So this is in the domain of A star. And A star sends this Q to uh, a map from V to F, which just factors through our Q. And so the question is, what do we put between V and W? Obviously, there's only one map we have. So, so basically, um, this A star of Q is going to be uh, Q composed with A, which necessarily goes from V to F. Okay, so <clears throat> we now know how to take duals of vector spaces. Uh, we know how to take dual of uh, duals of linear maps. So uh, the theory of cohomology is born when you apply this dualization machine uh, to the data prescribed by a chain complex. And that's what we will do next. Um, a cochain complex. So this is the, the mirror version of a chain complex, which we've been looking at for two weeks now. Um, over F is a sequence sequence. Um, and here all the indexing happens in superscripts by long-standing convention uh, handed down by the Greek gods themselves. So this is a sequence of uh, F vector spaces and linear maps. Um, and the other convention is it goes up in the indexing unlike uh, the chain complex boundary operator. So zero to C0, and now this is the map D0 goes to C1, D1 goes to C2, and all the way up. Um, side note, the Cs are called the cochain groups. So, so far we've flipped around a whole bunch of arrows and, and added codes to the beginnings of known words. And the Ds are called the co-boundary maps or co-boundary operators. And of course, that's not all. Um, if, uh, if this was it, then th this would be extremely boring and we wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Uh, there's a mirror version of the chain complex um, condition. So, uh, so this data satisfies uh, the relation that whenever you compose two adjacent ones, you get uh, zero. So I am going to write that as D superscript i, the i minus 1, I think that's, uh, and let's make it k to keep it consistent with our indexing. Okay, so that's the definition of a cochain complex. Um, and I'd like to say a little bit about what this looks like in, um, in the most familiar case, the case we love most of all, where all these vector spaces are coming from um, a simplicial complex. So, Let's talk a little bit about the simplicial version of this picture. So far, it's just abstract sequence of vector spaces. Um, so you let K be a simplicial complex. Um, so this has a usual chain complex. Uh, we write this as C0k going to 0, uh, big K up here, the 1 chain C1k, and then there's the boundary operator, and then C2, and the second boundary operator, and so on. Now, the cochain complex is what we get when we dualize this. Um, so dualizing this, we get, um, and for now, let's just write it the way we've indexed it, right? So, so zero is going to be here. That's the dual of zero. This should not be very hard to believe. And now you have C0K dual. The map has flipped. And here you have D1K dual, C1K dual, 
this is extremely cumbersome to write, uh, believe it or not, um, and especially going backwards. Uh, D2K star and so on. Okay, so um, we get this backward pointing um, sequence of vector spaces and, and linear maps. And so um, uh, in order to avoid this cumbersome uh, garbage of writing stars everywhere and so on, um, we will uh, write this as follows. So we're just giving things um, um, uh, new names. So as follows, not following. Um, so C I K star is just going to be um, C upper I K. So this is the group or vector space rather. Of um, I dimensional co chains. And uh, the, the dualized boundary maps, we're going to change their um, grading. We're going to change their indexing so that their index coincides with whatever they're starting with. So if you look at the first, um, the first uh, map over here, this del one transpose or, or star dualized, this is going from zero to one. And we'd like that index to start from zero. So all we're going to do is uh, this dual is going to be the i minus one again in the superscript. And this is the linear co boundary map. Okay, uh, if you make this change and uh, write things from left to right, Uh, we get 0 to now C0k, C1k, much nicer, no stars. And here you get the co-boundary map 0, which was the transpose of the first boundary map, and similarly here. Um, okay, what should, we, what should we say about this? Uh, the point is that... Um, in the simplicial basis, so let's write that as a proposition. Using the obvious basis, bases for all the chain groups, uh, C, I, K. What is that basis? Namely, the set of all K simplices or all i simplices in this case. So if you use this uh, simplex-induced basis, um, then the co-boundary maps um, are precisely uh, the transposes of uh, the boundary maps shifted. Now, have I gotten uh, the indexing right? I think I have. Uh, so the first co-boundary map is going to be the zeroth boundary map shifted. Did we do this right? Let's go back up and check. There's a 50% chance that this is wrong. So the zeroth co-boundary map has to be the first one. That means as you go from co-boundary to boundary, the index goes up by one. So we did get this wrong and it's this. Good. So uh, that's going to be extremely useful when we start making computations in the next lecture. But this is it. This is uh, just a purely algebraic dual of the notion of a chain complex. Uh, the caveat being that we've re-indexed and all the arrows are now pointing in the opposite direction. But anytime you compose two of them, it's just transposes of things that compose to zero. Therefore, you still get zero. Um, okay, good. See you in the next lecture.